Hello everyone, welcome to my All The Mod Star Guide. So, the All The Mod Star contains a lot of different things that it needs before it can be crafted. And it does have to be crafted in Mechanical Crafters from Create. So, uh, I thought I'd go over what you could get with All The Mod Stars first. First off, you got the Creative Source Jar. That just means infinite source. So you can just slap one of these down. You don't need your source creation whatsoever. You just use one of these. Secondly, you've got the Everlasting Guilty Pool. This is from Britannia. This is actually new because uh, Britannia got added recently. This just means infinite mana. So I think I'll be trying to set one of these up in my Let's Play series. Uh, we've got the Creative energy cell from applied energistics this will just supply free power i think to just applied energistics you've got the creative energy cube from power this is again just free power it it like you don't need power whatsoever after this because this will power everything same with the creative energy cube from mechanism i actually made one of these straight away and i'll go over why i wanted this one straight away uh at some point in this video You've got the Creative Energy Battery from Integrated Dynamics, same as the Energy Cube and the Energy Cell, Infinite Power. You've got the Creative Controller. This one's interesting because this is from Refined Storage. This one allows you to just place it down and it will always have power. Classic. All the mods right there, raining in the middle of uh, someone talking. Uh, next up, you've got the Creative Compressor. This is from Pneumatic Craft. Uh, you could just set the exact pressure you want, and I think it has. Th there's another one which does heat, which I forgot about. There it is, the uh, creative compressed iron block. This one will just put whatever heat you fancy. So we could put that at like nine 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 nine, and then yeah, that will just stay that that heat. And I think it transfers the heat straight away as well. So whatever's around this uh, will also be at that heat. And then finally, we've got the create. Uh, items. So first one is this one here, which is the creative blaze cake. Uh, you could just set any of your blaze burners to whatever you fancy. So you can have them on like low power, high power, you know, the one where they go blue. Let me grab this again and we'll try that out on here. So you can have them just as, you know, the regular blaze burner like this. Or you can have them always be this kind of blaze burner. You know, the, the blue one. It's really useful. And then, not finally, but the finally for the all the mod star itself is the creative motor. So this one's really good because you don't need a create, like massive create setup with uh, like the electric motors or loads and loads of water wheels or anything like that. It's all compacted into one block. And on the back, if you shift and scroll, you can set the speed. Uh, can you set it to... There we go. Yep. All the way up. And now that's spinning at max, basically. That's the, the highest it can go. Uh, there's other things that you can use the ATM star for. So those things are as shown here. You can turn the ATM star into a shard by crushing it down or by using the B. We'll come back to the B in a bit because that's going to be kind of important. There's the all the mods catalyst or all the catalysm. This is for silent gear. So if you've gone quite far into silent gear, you'll know that these are quite important. You've got the infinity pipe upgrade. This is like the best pipe upgrade you can have for the pipes mod. Really good. And you've got the creative flux efficiency. No RF use, very fast processing. It is super fast as well. We've used this a few in the Let's Play. So those are all the bits that you can do with it. You can also make all the mod style blocks and they are very uh, shiny. We started making our little path that we had around our village out of these in the Let's Play. Uh, they're very shiny. So that's all the things that you can use the All The Mod Star for. Few things in there you might think are very, very useful, which is why you should probably go and try make one of these if you want to do any end game stuff. So for me, I went for the Creative Energy 
cube first. That's the one from Mechanism. I think it's a slightly easier craft than the, the one from uh, the Power Mod. If we look at both of these recipes. This one is a star and then some of these Creative Energy cubes, which isn't that ridiculous. Uh, it's a bit of unobtainium. I will go over some easy ways of getting unobtainium at some point. Might not be in this part. This will be a, a few parters, I reckon. Uh, the power one requires the nitro cell, which is a little bit more expensive because you have to go up from the niotic and then all the way down to the, the basic, and so on and so on. So those two really useful. I went for the power first because it helped me automate the ATM star which is what this guide will be all about. Now, I thought I would sort of rank these in hardest to easiest. And the first one I think is probably the hardest for a lot of people is the dimensional seed. Myself included, actually, this was the, the hardest one in my opinion. So this seed here requires you to do something called soul engulfing. That involves throwing the solarium seed, which you can get uh, from Mystical Agriculture. That is just from smouting up some of the, where is it? Either the solarium ore that you get in, I think the nether, or you get it elsewhere as well. But you, yeah, that one's not the hard part about it. The hard part is you also need, it says it on there, uh, you can't hover over or anything, but it says you need a miniature nether portal a miniature exit portal, you need a miniature end portal, you need a lot of uh, like 5 and 6x versions of blocks. So that's like 6 times netherrack is a lot of netherrack, right? And the one on there that's the, probably the most difficult is the emeralds. For me, it was the most difficult. So emeralds took the longest because... There's only a finite way of getting emeralds without lagging out your world, right? And the whole experience of making the ATM star is about making machines that are efficient enough that you don't crash, which I think uh, has been plaguing a few people recently. I think the recipe has been changed recently because I do remember the uh, emerald block being 6x. That might have been in a different version, but 5x is still quite a lot. From my calculations, it was around 500,000, which is half a million. So that's quite a lot right there. So next up on the list, I'd say would be the next hardest is probably the wither compass. Don't hold it in your hand, otherwise you get withered. So this one requires these gravitational modulation units, uh, which require three antimatter pellets per and that means this one itself requires nine antimatter pellets. So antimatter from mechanism is a, a very difficult thing to get in my opinion. It requires the use of nuclear waste and there's some other things you can do that we will be going over involving bees. And yeah, it's just the, the one that I found was the slowest out of all of them, except for maybe the dimensional seed. Although I'd set this one up like as soon as I could. So the antimatter was coming in. And it's probably important to mention at this point that the ATM star, to automate this and start making your roads out of ATM star blocks, it's important to just realize that you don't need to automate everything. And by that, I mean that there's a second recipe for the ATM star, which involves bees. The reason I say you shouldn't automate everything is because the starry bee requires a ATM star block to turn a Patrick bee, which I will go over how to get the Patrick bee, into a starry bee. The starry bee, however, needs a block to pollinate on. So the starry bee needs, I think if I click like this, also needs another ATM star block. What the starry bee gives you is starry combs. So these starry combs, when you put them through the centrifuge, have a chance of giving you the ATM star shards. And you can use those ATM star shards to make 
the few bits that we talked about earlier, the catalyst and the creative flux efficiencies and the infinite pipe upgrades, but it also allows you to create ATM stars. So as you can see, the ATM star shards used to make ATM stars is how I would and have automated the ATM star using bees. If for some reason you are opposed to using bees, then you can automate every single thing here. Uh, but as I said, I would suggest using the, the combs from the bees because having to automate everything here is a little bit of a pain. And as I mentioned earlier, the lag that can be produced by some of the farms is uh, going to cause your world to become a little bit unbearable. Now, I would say a few things are useful to automate anyway. So a lot of stuff from mechanisms is very useful to automate. The grav units themselves, you might want to have one of those anyway. So automating that might be an idea. As I said, you need three per star and one for yourself. And altogether, you need 18 stars to make two blocks for the B. So that's quite a lot of grab units to, to like craft up yourself, right? So I'd suggest automating most of the things in that. You can always rip down some automations afterwards, which is the process we are going through currently. Next up on the list after the wither compass is anything else that uses antimatter. So we've got the pulsating black hole right here. This one also requires an antimatter pellet from mechanism. The antimatter from FTB industrial contraptions isn't that bad to get. Everything else on here is not overly difficult. It's just the antimatter pellet, which is why I put it up there with the most annoying to get. After that one, again, we're going for something that contains the antimatter pellet, which is the Philosopher's Stone. That one's got one right there. So if you've been counting, that is three for each of the gravitational units that we see in the wither compass, one over here for the black hole, and one down here for the Philosopher's Stone. So that is 11 overall that are needed for the ATM star. Next up on the list is none of these in the middle here. I'd say the next one that's really annoying to get is the nether star blocks because they are three time compressed. So if we were to craft this up somehow, there we go, in creative, you can just put a crafting table down. But if we do that and then spam all of those out and then you spam all of those out and then each one of these, it yeah, that's a lot of nether stars right there. There is a few ways of getting the nether stars needed, but I believe there's around 100,000 that are needed for one ATM star. So that's quite annoying getting 100,000 uh, of the nether stars right there. But luckily, we've just had a, a guide come out recently for mob farms by myself. You should go check it out. Uh, but the, uh, the thing that I, I think a lot of people are using is hostile neural networks. So with hostile neural networks, you can get not only, oh, I don't know if they've removed the recipe yet. So star, looks like they did remove the recipe. So there used to be a recipe in this where you could use uh, not just the wither predictions, but I think these things, the, the generalized ender predictions to make nether stars, but that seems to have gone away now. So that's pretty good. What it used to be was two with a skeleton uh, heads, it was basically a wither in a crafting table with one of the heads removed and a generalized prediction in its place. That has been removed now. So you are going to have to automate killing the wither. But as I said, hostile neural networks and just amp it up and have like loads of them is one decent way of getting enough nether stars. After that one, I would probably say... I think the rest are fine to make. The Dragon Soul is a little difficult, although recently they've removed the need to go to Blue Skies. So you can do either Blue Skies or the Twilight Forest. And this one here, the Snow Queen trophy, 
is proper easy to get because uh, you can swab and make a uh, spawn egg for the Snow Queen. And then you can use that in a spawner. As we talked about in the mob spawning guide, you can just add the Snow Queen's spawn egg. I'm in peaceful right now, which is why these are just spawning in and going away. But you can add the spawn egg for the Snow Queen to a spawner and then spawn one in and then kill it. Remember, that doesn't need to be automated killing the Snow Queen because there is, I think, two in this one and then one of the miniature portals. I think it's the one that's in this. So this miniature portal right here also requires one. So you need three overall for the Snow Queen head, but it can be swabbed from mob grinding utils. Uh, I'm not sure about the other ways of getting spawn eggs. I think capturing would work on the Snow Queen. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself, so huh, see what I did there. Uh, the Snow Queen can be sort of worked on and you don't need to go to Blue Skies anymore, so slightly easier. You do need to kill the Dragon several times though, because the Dragon scales from Quark one gets dropped per dragon, no matter what looting effect you have. So if you are going to make 19 of these stars, or 18 to get the two blocks, I would suggest doing 19 because the first block, you, you know, the first ATM star you get, you should probably turn into infinite power because it speeds everything else up. Uh, but if you're going to make 19 of these, you do need to kill the Snow Queen and the Dragon 19 times snow queen is 19 times three times but that can be done manually and yeah killing the dragon's a bit of a pain but once you've done it you don't need to go back and do it again next up we've got the nexium meter this one's a little bit of a weird one as well because the tesla coil from immersive engineering requires a duroplast sheet and to make a Duraplast sheet, you need some of this resin. And to make this resin, you need to use basically all of the machines from Immersive Engineering. So this one is an Immersive Engineering grind. The rest of the recipe is not that bad. If you look at it, you can get thousands of the singularities in just a few seconds uh, by using a sink on the thing that makes singularities, these things here, the matter condenser. Uh, it's, yeah, very quick. Player transmitter, once you've got the power orb all automated and set up, you can just set a recipe for it. The rest of this, again, you can just set recipes for, and it shouldn't be too difficult. You do need to get, oh, I didn't really realize this, but you do need to get into mechanism power to create the polonium pellets, which we will go over a good way of getting that soon. I accidentally punched this so all of them fell out, but I thought with this, this would be easier to explain if they're in the inventory like this. I think I'm going to put nether stars over here with the wither compass with, eh, maybe not. I think nether stars are just annoying because you have to automate everything, but the dimensional seed is the hardest, wither compass and so on. And these ones over here are the least hardest, so the easiest, that's the word, brilliant. Uh, the unobtainium or the modium alloy needs to actually be bumped over one because this one's a little bit difficult. You need to set up a uh, mob farm, which I did not go over in my mob farm guide, and I'm kicking myself for it because it's a very useful one to know, and that is a drig me farm. It pains me to say because I always used to call them draugmies, and I still do, so I'm going to say draugmi farm. Uh, but that is purely because to make this, you need to have a piglitch heart. And a piglitch comes from the other, which is one of the dimensions added by the Order Mod team. And as you can see, that's 28 blocks worth of the unobtainium or the modium alloy. So that's 28 times 9 per Order Mod star. Piglitch hearts, which is a good good amount right there. So th these are actually kind of difficult. I might put them back over here, move these over. It's my little tier list. Uh, the dragon saw, as I said, is not, not that bad. The, uh, what is it, improbable probability device? 
it's not too bad. The only thing is getting the two billion FE in your improbable probability device in the uh, in the nitro batteries because you do need two of those. So uh, what I'd suggest is when you've made your amazing power that you're going to use, uh, we used a couple of nitro reactors from power to begin with. Uh, we were pumping them full of all of the bits that they need and then that was getting us just enough power so we could power the batteries from power, funny enough. And then the rest of this is relatively easy to automate. There is the storage parts from extra disks that you could do. Depends if you're doing refined storage or AE. If you're doing AE, we didn't do that, so I probably can't help you with that. But the extra disks, I would suggest using the fluid storage part because the other storage part actually cost more. So it makes sense economic wise to go the fluid storage part, this one here. Everything else can be easily automated in my opinion. Now, these ones over here, I'm gonna classify as the easiest to do. So this one does require piglet charts as well, but not as many, it requires 18 per. Uh, I'm gonna leave it over here with the easiest because once you've set up the unobtainium or the modium, you'll have the automation already for the piglet charts. So this these ones can be done last is what I'm trying to say. So the awakened unobtainium vibranium alloy uses the new thing from mystical agriculture with the essences in the corners and then the vibranium blocks around and everything using the awakened altar. Really interesting. I'm glad that they've started adding extra bits to uh, the mystical agriculture because yeah it's been a while the creative essence i'm gonna say is probably one of the easiest because at some point you're probably gonna set up either an insanium essence farm or do what we did which was we set up a bee for it so there is a way of getting bees there it is insanium spawn egg so to make this, you need to go all the way down to the Prospera Bee spawn egg, which can be created by smooshing up a load of Prospera Bees, which can be created by adding a Prosperity block to a Crystalline Bee. You smoosh them up, you get enough, and then you can make yourself an Insanium Bee. And you can make yourself a load of Insanium Bees, and they will give you more Insanium to get more Bees. So that's what I would suggest. I would say that the Insanium B way is slightly more efficient when it comes to lag because you don't need a huge farm set up with essence but each to their own if you don't like doing bees then make a farm and you will need quite a lot of it though because this requires first off four blocks of Insanium and then basically Eight more blocks of insanium for the gemstones because the gemstones require two insanium each so i put that in the middle of, of like the easiest i'd say because setting up farms i'm sure everybody who has played minecraft by now has set up massive farms and uh if you have been getting into bees this one is one of the easiest you can do and of course the last one on the list is the patrick star which is a load of concrete and concrete powder so this one again relatively easy the mechanical crafters that you see in front of us here there is quite a lot of them so you might want to set up a bunch of water wheels or i used i think four or or two of the uh electric motors added by create crafts and additions you can stick them one each side right here. I put one there. Um, wow, well, I put one here and here, basically. So that is my tier list of most annoying to least annoying to make. Uh, I think in this episode, we will focus on the unobtainium alloy block. I did realize I completely forgot about the oblivion shard. This one does require some automation, which involves the engulfing thing again that we had from the dimensional seed right here. Uh, 
However, again, you only need to make 18 or 19 of these. So you don't need to set up a massive automation for it. You can if you want to. I did because I didn't think about it at the time. You do need to get into some Nature's Aura as well, which amazing mod. I really like Nature's Aura. And the Rose of Oblivion you can find in the end. And the end will have them just all scattered around. And as I said, you just need to pick up like 18 or... Uh, yeah, you just need to pick up 18 or 19 of them. So once you pick them up, you don't have to come back for them. That's what I'm trying to say. So the Unobtainium or the Modium Alloy Block. First things first, I would suggest getting yourself a little drag me. There he is, doing a little little dance right there. To do that, you're going to need a drag me shard. So drag, or what's it called? Charm, one of these things. I'm going to add another one, because why not? You can have multiple on the same hinge. Uh, what you need to do is use one of these charms, which come from a drag me shard. That's what I was trying to say earlier. Uh, you need to do the uh, enchanting apparatus. Turn it into one of these charms, and then you can right-click it on a piece of mossy cobblestone, and you get a couple of dragmies. They are called drigmies, but I call them dragmies, so apologies. Next up, you're going to want to get your willing victim. I'm using a pig right now because I'm in peaceful, otherwise it gets swarmed by slimes. But as you can see, there's like this weird particle that flies around and it's going over to here. And eventually, this is quite slow, I must admit, which is why more charms are useful. Imagine this is the piglitch in the other. Uh, yeah, these guys will collect what this would normally drop when you kill it and plonk it in the nearby inventory. So you could, this could be an ender chest which is hooked up to your system and that's how a lot of people, I think it's one of the only ways people get the uh, piglitch hearts. Other than that I think people have been using the loop pinata effect from apotheosis which is an affix on a sword. Loop pinata makes it so whatever you kill drops a lot of what they normally drop. It's quite useful, but I think the best way of doing it automated is by using Draugmies. So that will get you the Piglitch Hearts, uh, which are needed for the recipe that you see right here. So you need all the Modium, Unobtainium, and a Piglitch Heart. So you need one of these per ingot. Next up, you're going to want to put those in one of these energizing orbs. Now, you might have noticed that I'm not mentioning how to get all the modium uh, or unobtainium because there's a really easy way of doing that, and that's using the lasers from immersive engineering to get the raw unobtainium ore. As you can see right here, it's listed under the laser drill. You set up a laser drill in the end highlands biome with a purple laser lens you can actually set if we look inside the or laser base you can set the depth so we can set this to whatever we want and what you're going to want to do is to set yours between y30 and y60 so on here we can bump this up this is going to be very loud so i'm going to skip it there we go set it to 30 or 31 or wherever you want to put it Make sure it's between 30 and 60, and then that'll get you with the purple laser lenses and a bunch of the, the lasers around it. That'll get you loads of the raw unobtainium ore. I will say you won't always get the ore. I think a lot of people are confused about that because it's not 100% chance because other things can be spawned in with uh, the laser drill. So a few of these, like this one here, and Highlands, if it's between Y5 and Y68, and that gets you rich Iridium. Although I think this bumps up the likelihood of getting that. So if you put the, the purple one in, that one might not turn up. But there are a few other things, like if we search for purple. There we go, purple laser lens. You'll see right here that there's a weight of 1 on the raw unobtainium ore, but there's a weight of 9 on the raw azure silver and that is again in end highlands so you're going to get a load of raw azure silver but 
you will be getting raw unobtainium ore as well. Especially if you lob a load of lasers at this. Anyway, that's how you get unobtainium. The same goes for all the modium. You can, again, use one of these, but in the deep dark biome. And again, if you just look up the recipe, you will see that it's between 2 and 20 in just the deep dark biome. So stick a laser drill in there, you get the same. But this time with yellow laser lenses. So that's how you get those two. And it's super quick after a while. Once you've got everything set up, you've got loads of power going over there and so on and so on. Uh, so that's how you get those those two. The piglet charts is how you get it from over here. Next, I'm going to set up a little simple automation twice. One for refined storage, one for applied energistics. Now, you've got to be a little careful with your drug means that they don't run off. So you might want to block them in or something. But yeah, mine ran off. Here is a simple setup for refined storage to get yourself some of the unobtainium or the modium alloy, which you can then auto craft into a block. So the first thing you want to do is, well, you're going to need the piglet charts and the all the modium and the unobtainium in your system. You are going to put a crafter on the power orb. You also need to power the power orb. I'm using a creative energy cube right here and that is just going to be powering this orb. You don't need to use this. I used a flux point, which was on my power system. And then you can do the little star like this. Or you can do it the way that you've, you've set yours up. But you do need a crafter. And you also need an importer. Just like that. I forgot the importer. Brilliant. Uh, you also want to set your netherite crafter or your crafter to... Uh, this one's huge right now because I've got a weird GUI setting, but you want to set it to uh, Redstone Pulse Insert Next Set. This is the way that in refined storage, you tell it to do one at a time. Because what this will do is it will only send one set of like th these items into the power orb. Uh, and then what this weird redstone over here is doing is letting this know when this is finished. The importer will not import like the piglet heart and the all the modium and the you know it won't import anything that isn't a finished recipe, so that's why you can just slap an importer on there. Uh, so that's all the basic things right there. The next thing is you are going to want to pattern the all the modium unobtainium alloy ingot. So as you just saw when I did this you just go to the power energizing area and you can use the move items and that will just plonk in the recipe like that and now we've got a recipe that says all of these items turn into one of the ingots right there so if I chuck this in like that and then we request just a single one for now you can see what happens this goes in and it's taken its time because I haven't put too many of these energizing rods on here. Good old rod. And it will just finish up. This is getting a redstone signal, but for now that doesn't really matter because we're only making one. They're still over there. Brilliant. Once this finishes up, it will go in the system and we'll have one of those unobtainium or the modium alloy ingots. And it's about to finish, and it has finished, and the import has done its job. We've got one in the system right there. You can see it in the crafting grid. There it is. Now, if we wanted to make more of those, we can just... If you press uh, Shift and then Control and then click, it will allow you to create more with one being in there. So let's do 10, for example. As you can see right there, the crafter has only put in one of each. And that's going to be crafted up. This has sent a redstone signal. So the redstone comparator right here has put uh, an output power of three because there's three items in there. Uh, I've put a redstone repeater on this so it comes around to the netherite crafter. This has got 11 power. That does have a redstone signal. So technically, even though the pulse is for as long as these are in there, it still counts as a pulse. A pulse in Minecraft for redstone at least, 
is when something goes on and then off. So as soon as this finishes, like right there, the redstone finished, that technically is a pulse, and then that's why that has gone back in the system. Next up, for applied energistics, I'm not the, the best at applied energistics, so apologies, but what I've done is I've also connected the storage controller to the three things that we've got right here. Uh, so that they share the amount of piglitch hearts, all the modium and unobtainium right there. And I've just set this to craft a couple of these. I wanted to see if it worked because I completely forgot if this is how it does it. But looks like that's how it happens. So what we can do, I'm not sure if there's a way of crafting this without, you know, with the stuff in there. But we can set this one to 10. Start. And the most important thing here, if you're, you know, au fait with a bit of applied energistics is you've got to make sure this is on. Do not push crafting ingredients if inventory contains a pattern input. There is like a second one of these. I don't want to click it, otherwise it will stop it. But uh, And it will lob everything in there. But this one here just means it will send one at a time. You don't need all the redstone faff like you've got over here. But you do need all of the crafting stuff that you need right here. And um, again, I'm using a creative energy cell. I'm using a creative controller over here. So they each have their, their own ways of doing things. I've got an import bus right here. I've got the ME pattern provider right there. Hello, mate. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's a pretty good sword. Anyway, uh, yeah. So this is still going to do exactly what we've done over here except no need for the redstone right there because refined storage doesn't have an option to do just a one at a time like applied energistic does the redstone still works but it all depends which route you're going down if you're going down the uh refined storage route like i did then redstone is needed and there's quite an, uh, an easy way to do this as well which is you can get rid of all of this redstone you can set yourself a frequency on a redstone link from create, set the other one over here to receive. So as soon as this has an item in it, so we can put, I don't know, one of those in there, you can see this is lit up. And then when we take it out, it's not lit up, lit up right? So the comparator is still needed and you just use redstone link to power this. That's how I've done it in my series. Uh, you might want to do the redstone or figure out another way of doing it. but. That's the way that I know how to do it, and I know Applied Energistics has the little button up here, which is very useful. Again, for the pattern, I don't know if I showed the pattern, but that one's relatively easy to make. You just do the same thing that you've done for refined storage. So if we get rid of this pattern, and we stick it in like this, you go to the energizing area, and you hit the plus, and it encodes the pattern for you. Same thing is done with the unobtainium vibranium alloy, which is needed for the uh, unobtainium vibranium alloy block, uh, which you will use in awakening unobtainium vibranium alloy block. It's a lot of words right there. So to get the essences, you will need to make the different seeds. So the air seed, uh, all the avatar seeds is what I call them. I don't know what they're. Element seeds? Yeah, element seeds. So air, earth, water, and fire. You need to make each of those. You need to get the essence. You need 40 of each, as it says right here. And you place them in these things right here. So once you place this down, it does show you the little ghost blocks. So you can place them down however you like, like this. And then in one of these, you can use the essences like this. So that one puts 40 air in. 40 earth, water, fire. These don't need to be in any sort of specific area, but you can put them in however you like. Then if we grab one of the unobtainium vibranium alloy blocks, chuck it in like that. All we need to do then is add the unobtainium and vibranium. And just to show you that they don't need to be in any order either, I'm putting these two over here and these two over here. And then we give this a redstone signal like this and it will just combine up just like that and then you got yourself the awakened version 
So as you can see, just for two of the blocks in the ATM star, that has required quite a lot of space and quite a lot of automation needed. Uh, I will say you can pipe into these, you can pipe into the essence vessels, so, and I, I used modular routers because you can just send them from miles away into there. Um, this one over here, yeah, we got all of the raw pork chops and everything. It has rained non-stop trying to do this, so apologies for that. Uh, but once you've got this automated, I'd suggest trying to automate this one first. Well, as soon as you've got the resources and you've got your all the modium and the unobtainium and vibranium, for example. If you've got all of those automated and you've got the piglitch hearts coming in, I'd suggest setting up an automation for that as soon as possible because it is... A very long time, as you could see, this, this one has just finished making its 10. And that was going for quite a while. So that was about 10 minutes, so like a minute each, if that. Maybe 40 seconds to a minute each. And you need to make an absolute ton of them, especially if you want to get 18 stars to make two blocks to get the bees up and running. I think that's all we've got for this tutorial today. I think next time I will probably go over bees or how to set bees up for the creative essence, some sort of automation for the oblivion shard, or if we're talking about bees, I might show you the bees that you can use for the antimatter pellets, which should help speed stuff up. Brilliant. Well, thank you for watching. If uh, you've got any questions, uh, you can pop into my Discord. I've got a world download where I have got all of this automated. Not all of it, I've got the bees automated. So if you did want to check that out, then hop in the Discord, there's a download link. If you've got any questions whatsoever, we're pretty useful and helpful on the Discord. Uh, you could always try the ATM Discord if for some reason you don't find an answer in my Discord. And you should try the ATM Discord anyway, because they're awesome over there. Lob me a comment if you agree with my uh, tier list that I put up. If you don't as well, just uh, tell me which one you think is the most difficult. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye.